Okay, Your Honor, on January 22nd, 2010, the defendant, Daniel Cobra Basic, killed Dwayne Hurley while Hurley was at his home in North Ridgeville. Now, as you know, the defendant is charged with four crimes as a result of, of this incident. Count one is murder, and that is that the defendant purposely killed Dwayne while he was sleeping or while he was actually in his home. Count two is also murder, different theory, and that is he caused the death of Dwayne Hurley as a proximate result of committing a felonious assault. Count three is felonious assault that the defendant caused or attempted to cause serious physical harm to Dwayne Hurley. Count four is felonious assault, and that is that the defendant caused physical harm to Dwayne Hurley by means of a deadly weapon. And the deadly weapon in this case would be either a knife and or a pickle jar. The facts are these. It's January 22, 2010. Uh, you might recall it was the day President Obama was in town. Uh, he was at LCC and, and visited Schmitty's in Elyria. Uh, now, the defendant is a 16-year-old boy. He previously attended North Ridgeville schools. He withdrew and was attending life skills in Elyria. Uh, the victim is Dwayne Hurley. He's a 55-year-old man, never been married, uh, lived alone in his house on Ronald Drive in North Ridgeville. He uh, was on disability. He had bad knees, uh, bad wrists, uh, bad back. He was also bipolar. Uh, previously worked for the city of Avon Lake and had a prior uh, criminal offense of bribery, I believe falsification, and theft in office. Uh, now, the victim was very close to the defendant and his family. The defendant's family is made up of his mother, Donna Kovarbasich, his father, Terry Kovarbasich, his brother, Gregory, Gregory Kovarbasich, who I believe is 19, and then, of course, Daniel, who is 16. Uh, the family spent, often spent, spent time with Dwayne. Uh, they do things for each other. Uh, Greg and Daniel would cut Mr. Hurley's grass. In turn, Mr. <coughs> Hurley would let them drive drive his car uh, and, and use a computer, come over his house, should just generally hang out. Uh, the family spent Christmas together, Thanksgivings together with Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne would often buy buy things for the family, and not just at Christmas. He'd buy pickles, cigarettes, clothes, and like I said, he'd let, let the defendant drive his car, sometimes when the defendant was not licensed to drive the car. And like I said, the defendant... Hey, yes. Donna, Your Honor. Donna, Donna Corbett-Basich. Dad is... Is Terry Corbett-Basich. And he's got brothers. I believe so, yes. No, no, I mean... Oh, the, the defendant? Yes. Yes, he has one brother named Greg, Your Honor. And I believe Greg is about 19. Okay. So that would be the... Uh, these would be the family members who were involved with Mr. Hurley prior to his death. Yes. Very well. Okay, thank you. Now, the incident on January 22, 2010, it's not self defense, it isn't voluntary manslaughter. The, phys the physical evidence that the state will show indicates that the victim was ambushed, pure and simple. Now, the defendant was dropped off by his father about 7.30 p.m. 7, I'm sorry, about 7.20 a.m., Your Honor. Uh, dropped off at, at Dwayne's house. Uh, Dwayne was supposed to take the defendant to school that day at Life Skills. And the reason he's supposed to take him to school is because Mr. Corver Basich did not have gas money to take, take Daniel. So he was going to have, Dwayne was going to actually wake up, take him into Elyria to Life Skills, as he'd done several times before. Now, the physical evidence we have, blood splatters, the injuries, Photos of the, sh of the scene all show that Dwayne Hurley was likely asleep or at least lying down, facing away from the defendant when he was attacked. Now, the defendant struck him, it looks like at least three times in the back of the head with a large pickle jar. And this pickle jar is about this big, Your Honor. It's not a normal pickle jar that fits, that fits nicely in the fr refrigerator. This is a large, large pickle jar that full of pickles with juice, weighs about 10 pounds. The defendant struck him three times in the back of the head. This causes, the strike to the back of the head causes blood to splatter on the sheets and the pillowcases that are in the bed that, that Dwayne's lying in. Now, the pickle jar doesn't break. We believe he struck him with the bottom of the jar, not, not the rim part or the side. We believe it was at the bottom of the part, bottom part of the jar. In the course of the assault, the pickle jar opens, 
and the pickled juice spills all over, looks like it spills all over Dwayne, spills all over the bed, and then falls onto the floor. Defendant then goes to the kitchen. Dwayne gets up, gets out of the bed. Uh, he's in a state of confusion. He's in a stupor. He stumbles down the hallway. Uh, there's blood dripping from his head at the time. And you'll see blood on the closet door and on the door jams and then subsequently down the hall. At the end of the hall, Dwayne is then ambushed a second time by the defendant with a kitchen knife. The defendant stabs Dwayne in the heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidneys at least 50 plus times, possibly 60 times. And you'll hear from Dr. Mattis who will, t will tell you about the difficulty in doing the autopsy due to the large number of stab wounds. Most of the stab wounds are in the torso. Dwayne falls to the floor at, at the end of the hallway, right at the landing where the steps to, to his house to go out the door are. Uh, there's a stab wound to the heart, and that is what ultimately kills him, uh, drops his blood pressure. Now, some of the stab wounds have only a little, little, little blood coming out of them, and that is because of the reduced blood pressure. There's no blood pumping through his veins, so there's no blood coming out. Uh, after the attack, the defendant calls his father, Terry Cover Basich, from Dwayne's home phone at 8.03, uh, in the morning. So we know the attack occurred sometime between 7.20 to 8.03. Uh, that call lasts about 18 seconds. It's cut, it's cut off. Well, there are, the defendant hangs up with his father. He then calls him back uh, at 8.04, and they talk for about two minutes. Uh, Terry? Yes, yeah, sure. Your first call? Uh, first call is at 8.03, Your Honor. That's a.m. or p.m.? A.m. Like I said, the defendant's dropped off at the house at about 7.20. So we know the attack occurred somewhere between 7.20 and 8.03 a.m. And then there's a second call at 8.04. And the defendant talks to his father for approximately two minutes. Now, his father then picks him up, uh, goes to the door, sees Dwayne lying there motionless, pretty much knows he's dead. Now, the defendant's heart is racing. Uh, he has an elevated level of an of enzyme called troponin in his heart, as if he's having a heart attack. Father, take, nevertheless, Father takes him, instead of straight to the hospital, goes to Mark's, where Donna Cover Basich works, Mark's in North Vigil. Uh, stops to see her. Uh, she's paged at about 8.20 a.m. to come up to, for a phone call, and from there she goes out to the parking lot to talk to Daniel and to uh, Mr. Cover Basich. Now, the defendant and his father then travel to St. John's West Shore, and Terry Cover Basich then calls 911 at approximately 8.37 a.m. and talks to the dispatcher from North Vigil PD, tells him that his son just attacked a man and that he's taking his son to the hospital. And you'll hear the 911 call. Now, like I said, at St. John's, the defendant is treated for having an elevated level of an enzyme called troponin in his heart. Uh, and that happens due to excitement, adrenaline, like an adrenaline rush uh, from, the, from the stress. Now, at the hospital, the defendant has no real injuries. Uh, he has a slight abrasion to the bridge of his nose, uh, has a scratch to his chest, uh, does have some cuts on his, on his legs, but those he tells the officers are from skateboarding. He has no real injuries. There's no injuries to his hands or any other parts of his body. And North Vigil PD uh, officers went to that, went to St. John's and actually looked to see whether he had any injuries and took photographs of him there. Uh, he has no defensive wounds, and that means he wasn't attacked, and he didn't attack anybody by punching him because otherwise he'd have cuts scrapes on his hands or at least bruising. Uh, means he used a weapon. Now, North Ridge Police have dispatched to Dwayne Hurley's residence. Uh, they arrived there uh, shortly after, after the incident, after 911 is called. They find Dwayne Hurley at, at the top of the steps. He's been brutally beaten about the face, the body. Uh, like I said, he's been stabbed over 50 times, almost 60. Uh, he also has no defensive wounds to his hands or his arms. And that is because he didn't know it was coming. Like I said, he was ambushed. He had no idea the attack was coming. Now, Dwayne's, the back of Dwayne's head has at least three whacks caused by what we believe is a pickle jar. And you'll hear from Dr. Mattis regarding why we believe it was the pickle jar. He'll tell you that these, these wounds are crushing wounds, not, not slicing wounds. And that will be caused by a blunt object, such as a pickle jar. Uh, Dwayne's face has got significant bruising uh, to the side. Well, actually, both sides, including one ear. He's got a U-shaped cut, uh, cut to the flap, like a flap uh, to the right above his eye. 
Uh, his torso has extensive stab wounds uh, to his chest. Like I said, the heart was pierced by one of those stab wounds, and that was the, that appears to be the fatal, fatal stab wound, Your Honor. Uh, his lungs are, lungs are cut, uh, and that bled out into his chest cavity and into his periocardial sac, which is the sac that surrounds the heart. The liver, which is examined at, you know, in the course of the autopsy, is just filleted. And Dr. Mass will show you the photos and, and talk to you about that. The kidney, the back, the side are all full of stab wounds. Now, the physical evidence from the injuries at the scene do not lie. They've got no motive to lie. Hurley's hands and arms, like I said, have no injuries. The only, only evidence of any struggle on his hands or arms is that he has a broken fingernail, which appears that it could have been caused uh, by a scratch on the defendant's chest. Like I told you, the defendant, all, all he has is, is a braid to the bridge of his nose and a slight scratch on his chest. Dwayne Hurley wasn't able to fight back because he didn't know it was coming and, and the subsequent knifing and stabbing uh, was all done at the end of the hall. That was a result of defendant's clear anger, but Dwayne wasn't able to fight back because he was in a stupor uh, from the blows to the back of his head. It's kind of like a football player who suffers a concussion and then is able to get up and runs to the wrong huddle or to the wrong, wrong side of the, of the field when, when going off. Now, I expect the defense in this case to be that Daniel acted in self-defense. Of course, as you all know, that's the defendant's burden, and I submit to you, he will not be able to meet that burden. Uh, I believe they may also try to get a lesser included, which would be the voluntary manslaughter. Uh, lesser offense, but there is no reasonable, sufficient provocation by Mr. Hurley for Dan, for Dan to use deadly force. And you're going to see, like I said, Dwayne was ambushed. He didn't even know this was coming. I expect defense counsel to claim that Daniel, or, or Dwayne, was trying to rape Daniel and had Daniel cornered. Uh, but you're going to see the physical evidence, and that does not appear to be true. Uh, as far as the defendant's motive for the crime, um, I expect the defense to put forth that Dwayne was homosexual and that he was possibly, like I said, possibly raping or having some type of sexual relationship with the defendant. Uh, I would I would say that that may, may be true. There may have been some type of sexual relationship going on between Dwayne and the defendant. However, uh, there was no rape. Uh, clearly, something, this is, a, this is a crime of passion. Uh, Daniel was in a fit of rage. We have 50-plus stab wounds, and we have severe facial injuries. And there is something a little strange about a 55-year-old man hanging out with a 16-year-old boy. Now, there's another theory that we also have a potential motive for the attack. And approximately two days earlier, there is a receipt from Golden Corral Restaurant, which is located about half a mile from, from Life Skills, where Daniel attended school. And he attended school that day. And there's a receipt, but it does, it's not Dwayne Hurley's signature. Possibly Dwayne may have discovered that, that Daniel stole his debit or credit card and use this card at the Golden Corral. So that could, that could possibly be another, another issue. Uh, Dwayne, however, as you know, is deceased and is not able to tell us what the real motive was. And as you well know, I'm not required to prove a motive. Uh, it's not an element of the offense. Uh, based upon what you're going to hear from all the witnesses and the evidence, the physical evidence, uh, I'd ask you to return a guilt, guilty verdict on all four counts. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney.